Hi, I'm Neil Evans with the Harkin Tech Team. I'm here with Bo LeBlanc to go over our new integral backstay adjuster. Bo, what do you do for Harkin? I oversee the hydraulic product line for Harkin. I'm in charge of helping the sales team worldwide sell the product, as well as coming up with new products to bring to the marketplace, like the new integral. Quite often a question I get is, when we say integral, what are we actually referring to? An integral backstay is a term that means that it's an integral unit. The pump unit is built right into the cylinder. On more racy boats or whatever, you'll have a panel. And if you look in the catalog, you can see we have all sorts of options for panels that can then operate cylinders anywhere on the boat. So if you're only operating a backstay, by building the pump unit right into the, to the cylinder, i.e. making it integral, i.e. why we call it an integral backstay, is the most economical way to get to where we wanted to be. So Bo, what problem are we trying to solve in the marketplace? The biggest market out there for these units are, as I said, this product has been around in the market for 20 plus years. There's a lot of people out there that are nursing their old units along. They can't find seals. They're rebuilding the unit once a year, maybe even twice a season. You get to the point where it's easier just to pull the pins and put a new unit on. And that's what this unit was designed to do. Well, let's go through some of the features that we've changed to make this more cost effective for the consumer. Well, one of the big features is the gauge. You know, everybody always was adamant that they had to have a gauge. And the more we talked to our customers and found out that they really didn't use the gauge because as soon as you get about three feet away, you can't see that gauge. It's a very costly part of the whole unit. So by going to the batten stick to give a repeatability that the gauge really didn't give you was one of the major ways to take cost out. The other way we did is we streamlined the pump units. We had, for each unit, we used to have an individual bottom pump unit. We've now standardized the pump unit for all of our units so that we can do economy of scale when we machine things and take more cost out. Those are the two major factors. Other than that, we kept most of the Harkin engineered features, like the, ga the release valve the same. This cannot be over tightened because the Harkin design, where the other unit press the ball into a seat to seal it, the Harkin unit actually presses the ball off the seat so that if you tighten it more, you're just pushing on the ball off the seat against the spring more so there's no damage to it. Where with other units, if you're pressing it onto the seat, you keep tightening it, you eventually deform the ball and then it doesn't sit on the seat and seal anymore. So you're telling me there's no need to get a pliers to loosen that up like on If you units? get a pliers, all you're gonna do is break the part. You're not gonna get anything else. The other thing we kept is the internal feed tube. What we didn't like is some units have an external stainless steel tube or whatever outside. It just it adds cost to the unit in some ways. It also is not a very attractive feature and mainly if a rope or something catches on while you're docking, a docking line or whatever, you can destroy that unit very easily, or at least that part of the unit. If you can see, we actually gun drill this rod up into here, and you can see this hole here. So the oil actually comes up and comes out here to go into the, to the cylinder side. So the pump action, instead of doing an external feed, comes in there and brings the oil right in above the piston to activate the piston to bring it down, therefore eliminating the need for any external tubes, hoses, or whatever else. So what we tried to do mainly is keep all the good things from the old unit, but then optimize the production methods and how we can take some cost out to make it affordable for the standard boat user out there. Some of the features I really like about this thing is it's out of the box ready to use. It's basically a plug and play installation. You remove your old unit, you remove the cotter, the clevis pins, which you'll notice have no cotter pins, so there's no cotter pin that get caught on a sail or a spinnaker or a rope or a dock line. The handle comes ready to use right out of the box. You can drive a roll pin into the bottom of the handle, well, through the into the pump to keep the handle there all the time so you're never losing the handle. Or you can put the handle back in the original handle holder you had on the boat. It's a great, simple unit 
that's well thought through and well engineered. We're here in the Harkin Test Lab. We've set one up so that you guys can see how it works and go through a couple of the key little features about this thing. As we talked about, this is your release valve. So you turn it clockwise and you start pumping the handle. You'll notice as I pump the handle, the rod starts going up and down. The more you pump, the more it comes down. Once you get it to where you want, you stop and it holds the pressure where it is. Once you want to release it, you just go back to your, the knob and release it by turning it counterclockwise. Another feature that we already talked about was the batten stick. So as you pump it down, you notice that the stick moves down along with it. So you can get different numbers. So this is a way for you to repeat your settings from each leg or if you want to get a notebook out and make upwind settings um, for light air, medium air, heavy air, you can always go back to at least the starting point where you know that you're fast. So Bo, how many products are actually in this line? There's four products in this line. We have a Dash 6, Dash 10, Dash 12, Dash 17. The Dash actually refers to rod. If you had a Dash 6 rod, you used the Dash 6 integral. If you had a Dash 10, you used the Dash 10, so on and so forth. So it really was a way to say what the um, load was of the unit in a roundabout way. But it made it very easy for the customer to match the unit to their backstay. As we talked about, they all use the same um, pump body. And then we have two unique um, cylinder sizes or uh, housings or cylinder tubes. Uh, the smaller one is the 610, the larger one is the 1217. <laughs> that, once again, we are able to make these in mass production by going down to two so we get an economy of scale.